Um, so on the research side, what do we actually do? Um, there's the three main things really. Um, there's direct support to parliamentary committees. Uh, there's answering individual inquiries from MSPs and their staff. Uh, and briefing on hot topics too. I'll consider the first one a little bit uh, later. The second one, uh, individual inquiries from MSPs. That can be absolutely anything. Um, I read on climate change stuff, so the type of thing we've been asked this year, for example, or in the last, yeah, this year, let's say, um, includes air conditioning, legislation in New York, climate change risk assessments, uh, ambitions and indicators on climate change, and uh, I suspect that probably related to some development of the manifesto that one of the parties was doing, um, uh, but they didn't tell us that because they're not supposed to use us for these sorts of things. Um, climate change adaptation, carbon accounting, um, uh, emissions trading systems and things like nuclear consent and all these sorts of things. We, we can ask a wide range of issues. My favourite one ever was at the start of last session where we were asked uh, to tell someone about the environment and we asked them to go away and come back with a slightly better formulated question, which they never did. Um, and the third aspect is briefing on hot topics. So we try and get stuff out where we've got capacity to do it. Um, so at the moment we're um, trying to get something out in the Crown State, that's very big politically. Um, marine renewables is something else we're going to be publishing on, and um, ecological networks as well, Misha's working on for us at the moment. The sort of thing we produce uh, looks like this. Key issues for the Parliament in session four. And there's one copy here if anyone would like to. Uh, excitement of reading that, but um, it's managed to make it to the front page of the Scotsman and uh, the BBC and things this week just because it contains uh, some figures which are all sourced or are all sourceable, um, uh, which have created some political interest, but we're trying to stay off the front pages of newspapers. If we can. Um, so the first example I gave of the work we do relates to um, support uh, to committees and we support them uh, when they're carrying out inquiries, so areas that they're scrutinising the Scottish Government on, we help them with. Uh, and we help them when they're considering um, legislation as well. Um, so for the, the climate change bill, um, what we felt was that um, there was a need for the committee, which this bill was going to, to be a bit better prepared. Um, so we tried to uh, publish in advance a, a suite of these uh, spice briefings on climate change, uh, on all these types of issues. Um, to try and uh, make sure they had a, a decent uh, base from which to start their scrutiny. Um, and we did one other thing which was, I think, unique to any uh, committee in the Parliament. We sat them all down uh, with laptops and we managed to get them for a couple of hours uh, and managed to get them to go through some emissions scenarios to look at what Scotland would look like in 2050. Um, and I think we found that very useful in terms of trying to crystallise what the legislation was likely to try and do, um, and uh, I gave them context for, for their deliberations. Um, it was rare that we could do that. We don't normally have that sort of reading time for um, legislation. Um, they were all asking questions at that time as well, um, of, of us on climate change, and uh, at the committee, the Transport and Construction Climate Change Committee, went on fact-finding visits to Brussels and London, which we uh, helped facilitate. Um, I should say that some of these briefings that we wrote were peer reviewed by, uh, all our briefings are peer reviewed where we, where we can, where we are to do so. So people like Pete Smith at Aberdeen University, who's a lead author on IPPC, IPCC, um, and others like him were asked to look at these sorts of briefings. Um, and this is what the bill looked like when it arrived, apart from the sticky bits which I added. Um, we produced Briefings as it went through uh, the Parliament as well on the bill itself, um, on the waste provisions, including the podcast, forestry, which was particularly contentious when the bill was first introduced, uh, and um, briefings for the whole Parliament. By the time a bill gets to um, its end stages, not all of the MSPs in the Parliament will have scrutinised it in any great detail, and so it's important for us to try and help them out a bit with that. Um, the sorts of things that we do for uh, committees when they're considering legislation um, include suggesting witnesses, 
Um, so people that we think that they should hear from so that they get a balanced understanding of what the legislation is about and what it's trying to do. We help them with um, suggestive lines of questioning of those witnesses as well. Um, different committees operate differently. Some of them ask for this uh, support, some of them ask for themes, and some of them don't want that support at all. And we provide um, uh, whatever they would like. Um, Transport Infrastructure and Climate Change Committee did get some support in, in those aspects as well, and it helps the committee ensure that they've covered all the bases by when it comes to writing reports and recommending to Parliament what else should be done. And we help with um, uh, writing reports as well, although the clerks of the committee feed on that. Um, these, uh, the, 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 the the, the bill as introduced was fairly considerably strengthened and amended its heaviest, uh, most heavily amended bill that I've ever worked on in 11 years in the Parliament um, and included things like strength and targets, domestic effort target, public sector duties, uh, forestry was removed, um, duty on ministers to promote renewable heat, sustainable development duties, all sorts of things were uh, added to it. Um, which perhaps the Scottish Government weren't expecting and have had to react quite quickly to develop things like public engagement strategy and things like that. Um, and these things, these amendments can, can sometimes come from anywhere, they can be well formulated or they can uh, originate from charities and NGOs lobbying behind the scenes and which can result in um, amendments. But because the SNP were a minority government, some of those got through. Um, a follow-up activities to the bill, we uh, got the committee to go to Copenhagen in 2009, which was good, um, and we're continuing to support them on things which come back to the Parliament and will come back, um, including annual targets, carbon budget, reports on policies and proposals, um, and I guess development of the land use strategy as well. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens next, really, uh, in the Scottish Government with regard to climate change. It was a top line um, in the ministerial portfolio, uh, which meant there was a top line in uh, committees in the Parliament as well. Um, and we'll just have to wait and see um, what happens with it next. So we're doing all this stuff, um, uh, but on what basis? We've got one person, and only a part of me, kind of working climate change stuff, we've got one person working on transport and planning, um, and one person working on rural affairs and fisheries. So important for us are individual contacts, um, which do include Scottish Government, um, agencies, NGOs. Um, and on this point, actually, um, since the election, the two types of organisations that have been in touch with us have been uh, NGOs um, and power companies. Um, and these people kind of understand the workings of um, government and parliament very well. Um, and it's interesting to me that they're uh, the ones who've been in, in touch first. Not looking for anything necessarily, but just, just, just making contact. Uh, academics as well, we're trying to develop our uh, networks with academics, but there's a lot of you, not obviously you're all academics, but there's a lot of them knowing a lot of stuff, and we are very limited in terms of. Um, who we can get out to speak to, um, and uh, concern individuals as appropriate too. So things like this gathering are very useful for us to understand um, what's going on in the debates, um, but it does lead on to, I was asked to um, uh, give you three challenging questions, which I'm going to do. Um, uh, the first is, what are you doing that Parliament needs to know about, um, and why should the Parliament listen to you? Um, and who do you talk to in the Parliament at the moment? Or are you talking to people in the government and thinking, sort of conflicting on yourselves? You know, um, it's interesting to be able to get that clear. And there's a good leaflet on the Parliament website, actually. What's the difference between the two? I'd recommend you have a look at that if you're not sure. So that's who I am. And uh, you can get our research briefings, uh, everything that we publish is available online, apart from confidential stuff that we do for friends, fees, and ask this individually. So that's a quick canter through, um, and I'll leave it at that. Okay.